unnecessary. Sound effects. <laughs> All right. Well, welcome. Thank you for joining me here today. I appreciate it. Today on Thursday, I usually play solo mode games, and that's what we're doing today. Uh, live solo plays is uh, what you'll see. I, I try to use a different color logo on the uh, thumbnails um, for each one. Red is always going to be a live solo play. Orange is just a regular solo play. White is a live review, usually. And I think that's about it. I think there might be a blue one out there. Yeah, I use blue for painting videos. Uh, so that'll give you a little bit of a, uh, you know, a method behind the madness, as it were. All right. So that's how we are going. We are live. Thank you for joining me. I appreciate it. We are on the flip side. So thank you for being here. Uh, today, we're going to be giving a whirl to this bad boy right here. Dutch Resistance Orange Shall Overcome. It's designed by Marcel Kohler and uh, put out by Liberation Game Design. So this is a pretty neat one um, so far. I just read the rules this morning. I just set it up. The solo mode seems to be uh, pretty similar to... Uh, there are different... <laughs> <laughs> Pardon me. There are different ways that you can play solo mode, um, but I'm just basically using, I think, the the uh, original, you know, just solo mode one, uh, using another resistance group. And I've got a resistance group here. It's called Local Support. Uh, there's two uh, resistance groups that are there. There's group one or group two. I chose group two. Uh, but group each group has a basic side and a challenging side. So I'm using the basic side. I'm just going easy peasy right now. I fully intend to get my butt kicked, <laughs> but just because that's how it normally goes. Um, so uh, we're just using the regular solo mode one and we're using the regular version of the game. There is a simplified play version that's right here that I was like, Mm, should I? But I'm choosing not to. Okay, so there's that. Maybe I will regret that later on, but for the moment, I'm not regretting it at all. I'm just going to play the regular version of the game, solo mode one, using the uh, re other resistance groups that are out there, and we'll go for it. All right, so what's the... Um, Historical background. That's the really cool thing that really kind of drew me into this is the historical background of the game. Uh, so it's based on many historical elements from the, duck <laughs> from the Dutch occupation period. For example, the scenarios are based on activities carried out by the Dutch resistance during World War II. Just as importantly, Real people are used as characters in the game with approval from their families. That's a cool thing. Their character cards are based on their activities during the occupation with a short biography included on their identity cards. The intention for the game was to give you a feel of the period as well as to keep their stories alive. Love that. Although much time was spent researching and sharing a wide variety of information, not everything could be included and not everything could receive the same amount of attention. Still, I did my best to commemorate the legacy of those who are putting themselves at risk, who were putting themselves at risk for the well-being of others. That is from Mr. Kohler, Marcel, the game designer. Now, it's the beginning of the year 1943. Occupying Nazi forces have become more dangerous, subjecting you and other Dutch citizens to increased oppression. They constantly search your homes, take away your freedom, and send your family, friends, and acquaintances to Germany to do forced labor. You have had enough. You are determined to do something and will resist regardless of the consequences, even if it means death, because something has to change. It is clear you cannot do this alone. You have sought out others to share your view. Together, you will form a resistance group and help to liberate the Netherlands. So 
That is the background for Dutch Resistance, Orange Shall Overcome. Matthew Vincent, I have seen you say hello. Thank you for being here, Matthew. I appreciate you. So we're just going to also play Scenario 1. Scenario 1 also has four different levels of difficulty on here that you can uh, basically optimize your play for whatever level of difficulty you want to go at it. Uh, so there's a lot of ways to, verif to, to uh, vary how difficult the uh, game is. So that's a cool thing. Uh, so here it is. Scenario one, expand, your, expand the network. You started a local resistance group and have just finished the first meeting of your group to decide for your next steps. Spirits are high, but there is also a feeling of not knowing where and how to start. You realize you need the help of many other people in the area, but they will not trust you immediately. Therefore, you will need to get associates in different places by providing them with resources that they need before you can gain their trust. With each location that is added to your network, a new contract becomes available at another location. All right, so as we are beginning here, we had to set up the board in a somewhat um, uh, doo -doo 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 -doo, dif uh, different manner than normal. I'm trying out a different camera angle today because I, I might as well. Um, but anyway, uh, each of the different locations out here have a cost token on them. And what you have to spend is... Um, uh, at those locations to do that activity is different um, for each of these different places. Uh, so we had to set out all nine of these cost tokens out there first and face down like they're showing right here. But then I was able to turn over three uh, of them at three different locations. So I turned over the hospital, the church, and the hairdresser. These uh, black and white uh, locations are inactive locations. Uh, the color ones are active locations. So I can go to the distribution office, the meeting place, the bank over there in the corner, uh, and the cafe over here and get resources to um, uh, come and unlock these other locations. So how do we win? Well, we are trying to expand the network. So the goal of the scenario, when each location tile has been flipped to the active colored side, you win the scenario immediately. The loss conditions are if my uh, alibi uh, reaches zero, that's one way to lose, or when the group's morale has reached zero, that's another way to win. A third way to win is if I have to draw an occupier card and there are no more cards for me to draw, then I will lose the game as well. So three loss conditions, only one win condition, and that is to get all of these black and white locations flipped over to their uh, colored active sides. And if I'm able to do that, then um, I win the game. How do you do that? Well, there is a scenario action that we can take um, and use, and that is called the gain trust action. So what we basically have to do for the gain trust action <clears throat> is we have to travel to one of these non-active locations, deliver them the resources that they want, then I'll be able to turn that over into an active location. And then once I do that at one of these non-active locations, uh, and flip it over, I'll be able to turn over one of these other cost tokens and determine what they want. But basically, it's going to be very procedural as far as going through and trying to get the uh, uh, the different uh, resources that each of these people want. So that's pretty much what we're doing here. Um, now, <clears throat> a couple of things will happen during the course. Uh, so... In the round, there is uh, basically two halves to every round. There is a day period and then there's a night period. During the day, there's going to be a start phase where we take our three character cards uh, and one occupier card and reset the morale action tokens. So you see that these morale tokens over here are double-sided. So basically these count as one, two, three, four, five actions that I can use during the course of my round in addition to these cards here 
that are also going to be action or special abilities that I can carry out. Once I've used all three of my character cards and all of the morale action tokens that are out there, because depending on where the morale is, is determined by how many of those are available. So if morale dips to 17, then I won't get that far um, uh, morale action up there at the top. When it dips down to 13, I won't get the first uh, those top two, and I'll only have three morale actions. Uh, so there are uh, different things that you can do that. So after I've done basically in this first round, after I've done eight actions all together, uh, I'll move on to the night period in which there is a danger phase where uh, some of these uh, danger tokens uh, will move up or down, uh, depending on what happens here, more often down in the danger phase. Um, and that's based on how much, uh, how, what my alibi is and how many resources I'm carrying around. So on the easy side of uh, this board, um, I can lose one, two, alibi before I have to start raising the, uh, or rather lowering the safety level of the location that I'm in during the danger phase. And then there's a patrol phase where we'll basically reveal the top patrol card and follow its instructions and so forth and so on. If a location's safety drops down to below one, then a raid will happen and we have to turn that raid over. Um, there are also occupiers that are at these different checkpoints on the roads. So you have two different kinds of roads. You have safe roads, which don't have occupiers on them. And then you also have controlled roads, which do have occupiers on them. And there are policemen and soldiers uh, acting as the uh, controllers. So if you ever move on a uh, road that is controlled, then you have to flip over a halt card and carry that out. Usually it gives you a, um, a choice to make, and then you have to carry out the uh, consequences of that choice that you made, whatever it might be. Uh, you will be able to, once the station is revealed, I'll be able to go get tickets, which I can use to move around from one location to the next, bypassing uh, all of the controlled roads, but I can move from one location to another location on the board by using one ticket. Uh, these helper cards will come into effect uh, during the... Hmm, uh, uh, do, do, do. Uh, helper cards can be used... <clears throat> Dadgummit, I forgot. I had almost everything. <laughs> Uh, let's see here. Um, bum, bum, bum. Helper, 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 helpers. Sorry. Helper cards. Uh, six through nine. Okay. Um, uh, oh, gosh. There was something. Oh, okay. Yeah, this is what I was thinking about. All right. You can go to... The university isn't used in this scenario, but whenever I do this scenario action, I'll be able to use one of the two helper activities, uh, um, uh, special abilities, and do that. So, for example, this one right here, um, he knows two places that are worth using to avoid arrest They also, they, as they have been reported to be safer now. So I would be, so basically be able to choose two locations if I used this helper card and raise the safety uh, level by three and by two, so making it more safe. Uh, so the further it is over this way, the safer it is. The further down this way, the less safe it is. If I used Erica over here, Erica can write great texts that we can spread around, which will help everyone that is connected to our resistance group. So if I use Erica's special ability, then she'll raise morale by three. So uh, that just happens whenever I use the scenario action and uh, uh, turn one of these locations over to active. That's where helper cards are going to come into it. Auschweiss cards 
are going to be, uh, you know, these are basically identification cards and you can get these at the Forger location, which is right here. Um, and those can basically be used to nullify having to draw a halt card on a controlled road. So uh, it would probably be good for, for me to use those as well. Heading to Comic Con, super interested in this one. I'm going to be bringing it, Doug, so uh, maybe we'll get it played uh, this this weekend uh, in, a, in a bigger group. Uh, because it is a cooperative game, so that's a cool thing about it. Uh, you're all members of the uh, Dutch Resistance, and you're all working together. Um, but it looks like it might be a little little crunchy, because even with, with the, uh, the easy mode here, I, I'm uh, maybe it's just uh, I have a lack of confidence. Maybe that's what it is. But uh, it, it, I'm, I think I'm still going to lose. I, I'm expecting to at least. I'll put it that way. All right. So, um, all that. Well, with with all that being said, we're going to go ahead and get started here because I think um, I do have to. I do have a a hard end time at about two forty five because I got to get I got to get packed up and I've got to get. Uh, stuff in the car and, and get out there and, and uh, all that kind of thing. So, um, all right. So first of all, we're going to be looking at my character cards here. And the character cards here, basically this says I can use it for the active action points or I can use it for this down here, the special ability. So I can use the action point or I can use it for the special ability on these two cards. With this one though, I can use it for the action point, and I can also do this down here. That's why it's an and card, and then there are also or cards as well. So these are my character cards. So these are the three cards that I'll be able to play. And when I play my last one, I sorry, I have to draw an occupier card. So after I've played my last character card, I'm going to have to also play this um, occupier card. And the occupier card is is something that I have to play. You usually don't want to, uh, usually don't show this to anybody. But basically, it gives you an option to choose. You have to choose one or the other one. So I can a road adjacent to a location with a face up costs token, which is like the hairdresser or the hospital or the uh, church over there. I would have to uh, raise the level of that road. So. Um, if it were a police officer, I would basically have to turn it over to a soldier. Um, so there's that. Or I would have to, on each location with the face-up cost token, I would have to lose two safety. So that's a pretty bad thing here. So I am going to have to play that at some point or another. Uh, at your location and each adjacent location. Well, that's pretty good. Um, that would be one, two, I'd only get one pump out of that. Additionally, on an affected location, if there is a person in hiding present. Okay, so that wouldn't happen. Um, well, I think what I am going to do then is I'm just going to go ahead and play, uh, divide hiding places. I'm going to be that one, be my first one. So it lets me do an action, and it also gives me plus one to all of the adjacent locations. So I'm right here in the meeting place right now. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and raise the safety level of the church because I am the pastor. <laughs> um, that's, what, that's who Fritz Slump is. He's a Reformed pastor. He was 44, uh, and he starts normally on the church, but the scenario starts in the meeting place. So it says this, during, during the war, Fritz Slump gave many harsh speeches in his church at illegal meetings of the anti-revolutionary party and at the uh, Chris, uh, Kristallzik National Vagverbund, Vagver the Christian National Trade Union Federation, uh, criticizing the German occupation. As a consequence, he had to go into hiding in July of 1942. During this time, he met Helena Kuypers Reitberg, also known as Tante Reich. Um, together, they founded the, um, the National Organization of Help in Hiding. Uh, he started wandering the country to help expand the organization and became known as Fritz de Zwerve, uh, Fritz the Wanderer. In 1944, he was captured by Rulo, by a, in Rulo, by a Dutch National Socialist Movement policeman, Gerrit Stapp. 
Fritz was carrying a leaflet that he had written. He confessed that he was the author of the leaflet, but Stapp did not believe him as Fritz, with his dark colored hair, looked like a Jew. He was taken into prison in Arnhem. The National Organization of Armed Resistance managed to free him with the help of Baker and resistance leader Johannes Terhorst from Inscheid. Fritz went into hiding with his whole family while he still kept helping the resistance. So that who that is who I am playing uh, in this game. All right. So that was the I raised one there um, at one location. Additionally, on an affected location, if the no, uh, that's not going to be. Uh, that's not going to be there. Uh, I'm not adjacent to the hospital, so that doesn't get one. And I'm not adjacent to the cafe either. So um, I'm going to use my action to move one to two spaces. That is one of the possible actions that we can move. We can move one to two. And when you move one to two, basic, you can take one item and or uh, one hide person in hiding with you. You can spend a ticket, but if you spend a ticket to move to a location of your choice, you can't take a person in hiding with you. You can do a location action. Uh, you can use one of your thingamadoogie hoppers here. Um, you can roll a die to increase the safety in your, in your location. You can gain one information token at a place, uh, and then you have to lessen its safety by one, or you can do the uh, scenario action. So uh, there you have that. So let's see here. I'm going to go ahead and move to, I'm going to go one, two, like so. And that is going to, hmm, I think I'm going to lower the safety of the informant. I can't use its ability but I am going to uh, gain some information. So I lowered it by one, and I'm going to gain an information and put that right here, just like that. Um, so that was my action right here. Oh, wait, no, I'm sorry. That was my, my action was just moving down there. So I guess that we'll use this first morale action to actually gain one information of my choice. And then I'm going to go, I'm going to use another action to move one up here to the cafe. Then, um, I'll use another action to gain that resource, which is a contact right there. Hmm. Oops. Let's put that back in place here. Uh, when you use this card in the church, we're going to resolve it. Boom. Okay. Not really used to worry about that right now. All right. We're going to go with, um, we're going to use this for an action point, safety first. And we're going to take um, another. another contact where I'm at there, and then uh, two of my choice, hmm. and I'm going to go one to move back here, bank is way over there, isn't it? All right. Um, one more here to take another information, which I could be doing very stupidly right now. You never know. 
but um, I'm going to do that. And I'm going to go third, and I'm going to go one, two, come back up there. And that will be that. Now that I've played my third one, I have to resolve a dubious place. Minus two on every location, uh, a road with adjacent to a location with a face-up cost token. Hmm. We'll go ahead and use, we'll do that over here. So we've put a soldier in place of a police officer there. So we have done that one. Okay. So now we go into the night period. So we lower safety based on the scenario rules and your own alibi and resources. So I have to do minus one at my location. And then uh, let's see here. In addition to the normal danger phase, Effects from resources and alibi, if you are on at a non-active location, it would be minus one safety there and minus one morale, but I'm not. I'm at an active location, so I'm good to go there. I don't have to lose any more uh, safety or morale in that case. All right. <clears throat> so now we go to the patrol phase. So we turn over a patrol card. And patrol blue, that is going to be in this section up here, um, H, E, and G, and F. So we get uh, minus one morale. So that comes down one. And then we have uh, minus one safety in a house of our choice in the city. So all of the blue. So we have to roll a die and see where the safety goes down by one. And it is a one, so that is up there in the bank. Well, that sucks. All right, so the bank has lost one. Then all occupiers in the blue region move one to the white side. So <clears throat> this guy up here, for example, has D, um, he's on D and he, nope, he's in the wrong area. So not one here, here he goes to F. So he's gonna come down here. Um, G, H, I think that's it. That's the only one that moves because he's the only one that's in the blue sector. So that is over with and we put that one under the deck. All right, so now um, that was the danger phase and the patrol phase. So now we go back to the start phase. We draw three character cards and one occupier card and we reset the morale actions. So now we reset for all of these all the way up to wherever the morale marker is. So because I didn't dip below I didn't, I didn't hit 17. We still have all five of those action markers ready. And that is that. Matthew Vincent, the player board, is giving me Spirit Island vibes. Really? I don't... I, I guess. I, I guess I just haven't played Spirit Island in, in, in such a long time. Uh, okay. Um, let's see here. All right. Well, my first action is going to be... That one right there, because it's the furthest one away from me. That is going to allow me to get one uh, document. So I'm going to get one document and put it right here. And then that was my action. I did a uh, location action. That's basically what that is. And now I'm going to... Um, Okay, I think I'm going to do 
uh, safety first. So I'm going to use it for this down here. I'm going to get plus two where I'm at. So this is going to go back up to seven. Then I'm going to move one to two. So I'm going to go one, two. And then at the station, I'm going to get plus two as well. And that is that, that card right there. Then um, I will also use one more action up here to, well, let me see. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm just going to do that. And then I'm going to move one to there. Then I'm going to use another action to do the scenario action. So add a non-active location tile with face-up cost token. Spend one action point and all the resources indicated on the face-up side of the, uh, of the cost token to that location. Flip to the active side. Okay, so I need one. Oh, did I go the wrong one? What the heck? What did I do? I totally took the wrong kind of thing, so I needed money. Well, poop nuggets. Hmm. Could I have gotten over there? No. Well, nut, nut, nut. All right, okay. Instead of that, I'm going to go over there. Um, so let's see. It was one action to take the thing. This action to go plus one, plus one. And so I should be, let's see here. Let me do this again. I'm sorry. I messed up because I read the wrong thingy. All right, so I did one to get a document. I did this one to go plus one here, move two, and then plus one over there. So that's where I'm at. Now I have to go plus, I have to go in action here to go. This will be our first one, boom to the bank and the bank is going to make me draw a halt card because I had to cross a road. Let's just go right there. And so we're going to flip this over and here we go. I'm, just, I'm going to cover this up so I can just read what it says. All right. So walking with a full bag, you walk around with a bag that clearly looks full. As you get stopped, they start asking you questions about it. What are you carrying? Are those really your things, they ask. They demand to see the inside of the bag, and you only have a weak excuse why it's yours, which will surely make them check the bag. You can instead say it is not yours, and that you were tasked to bring it to the location, to, to the local administrative office. Do you say it's yours and let them check it, or tell them you were tasked? Oh, dear. Redo. Always allowed in solo. Yep, absolutely. Uh, can orange overcome Sam's dice rolls? <laughs> I don't know. We'll have to see. Uh, let's see. Um, do I let them check it or do I tell them you were tasked? Um, I will tell them I was tasked. All right, so tell them you were tasked. You tell them you were tasked to bring this. They seem to believe your story, but want to accompany you for some time to be sure you're really going that way. Lucky, it is the right direction. It is the right direction, so it does not make you very suspicious, but having to walk with these occupiers is still unpleasant. All right, so because I am, oh, 
Oh, man. Okay, so if I had let them check it, if I would have had three or more resources, which I do, I would have had to lose an additional alibi. Um, managed to avoid them taking something. They did, however, still suspect you of something, even if they didn't fully know what you were up to. Uh, if you have two or more resources, if it was a soldier, lose an additional alibi. So, um, all right, so you would have to lose one. I would have had to lose two alibi on that one if I would have chose to let them check it. But since I didn't, cho cho since I told them that I was told to bring it to the local administration office, I do have to lose a morale. And then the place where I'm going to is going to lose another safety, which is really bad because it's already down to four. Um, and if it had been a soldier, I would have had to lose three morale and still lose one of those. So um, that is interesting. So we'll go ahead and put that right there and we'll hold these over here. All right. So... I managed to do that, so I'll go here. I have to lose another safety here. Um, and I lost my morale up there. So now, good night, I gotta get rid of these things. Holy Moses and Aaron. Mm. I'm gonna have to walk by that dude again. Snapdragon. Uh, there is a rule, I think, wherever a halt card is played. Let me, I might have to raise the, uh, I might have to raise the, whatchamacallit, um, where are they? Raids, losing safety, resolving cards. Um, bum, 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 bum. Um, another player, once the hall has currently, you may move for, still further. Okay. So, okay, no, I don't have to, to raise it at all. Okay, cool, cool. All right, so now I'm there. I'm going to use another action to get a couple of bags of money. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I'm carrying eight things around. I'm not supposed to do that. I have to get rid of this stuff. All right, so what do I have? He wants two of that. I can't get rid of that. Well, that's not going to help much, but I'm going to play this one, and that is going to let me take an action, and I can raise where I'm at right now back up one, so no big deal. I'm okay. I'm okay. Um... So now I'm going to go, I'm going to use my regular action to go two, but I've got to stop here again. All right, tensions in the group. You have had a big disagreement with the rest of your resistance group. They asked you to do a task that they, would, that they think would help the group long term. There is an unknown risk involved as you must get to it get in contact with some occupiers. You are not sure if completing the task is worth it. You could do the task to ease the tensions in the group or tell the others in the group you just can't take the risk now knowing that tensions will rise. Um, I'm going to say no, it's too early in the game. You know it will not sit well with the others in the group, but you think the risk is just not worth it. You know which moments to be brave and which opportunities are better to pass on, at least for you. So if this is uh, a, uh, a police officer, which it is, I lose one morale. So we'll go down one here. Uh, hold on for a second. I have to go dark for a second. Hold on.
Sorry about that. Um, it was a call that I could not not take. I apologize. Uh, we are back, though. Thank you for being patient. I appreciate it. Uh, getting serious now, he's invoking the patriarchs. <laughs> <laughs> this theme sounds interesting. It is interesting. It's actually historical, and I love historical games. So anyway, um, where is that card? Here it is. All right. So uh, I basically said, no, it's not going to work. Since it's a police offer, I have to lose one morale. I'm already do that. If morale is 13 or less, lose an additional morale. It isn't at 13 or less. So we made the right decision here. So we're good to go as far as that uh uh, halt card is concerned. Now, with my movement, I'm able to move up to two. So from here, it's one, two, I'm back at the hospital. And so now what we're going to do is we are going to use another um, uh, morale action to do the um, scenario action, which is gain trust. So gain trust is looking for one money, two documents, and then two of my choice. So two of my choice. So which two do I want to use? Um, we're going to keep the money around and just use this information in these documents. And that'll come down like that. So five altogether. That's what we've used. And so now what we can do is we can flip the hospital over to its activated side, um, just like that. And it says that as a bonus for activating the location, immediately resolve the effect of one of the two visible helper cards for the character performing this action once resolved put that card at the back of the bottom of this deck. So I can do plus three and plus two at two locations on the board. That might be very helpful because the bank is hurting, but then this will give us another action next turn because it'll take us back up and uh, it, we won't lose that action. So I think right now we're going to use Erica. Erica can write great texts that we can spread around, which will help everyone that is connected to our resistance group. So this one is going to go down to the bottom, but it gives us plus three morale and one, two, three. So we'll have all five of our, our um, uh, morale actions available to us at the end. Then place the cost token that was just resolved back into the game box so this can go away. Uh, right there. And then um, if there are still face up tokens on the board, choose one and turn it over face up, pay, making the resources needed visible. Um, let's see here. I think I really want to get that station unlocked. So now I'm going to turn this over and this one needs a money, uh, a um, a contact and two documents. Well, dadgummit, I used a document on the other one. Well, poop. All righty. Um, so that is that. Hey, Slammer, Slammer Sammer, what you playing? We are playing Orange Shall Overcome. Oh, it's called Dutch Resistance. Orange Shall Overcome from the Liberation Game Design Group and Marcel Kohler. Uh, let's see here. I don't want to go to the church right now. And I don't have that anyway, so I have to use this for the action. I've got two actions left. What do I do? Let's see. We don't need any more money. But we do need... All right, so we're going to go move this, and we're going to go one, two... And then we're going to use this for just the action and stay over here in the meeting place. And that's all I'm going to do. So now we have to resolve the occupier card and we have to choose either. Uh, we're going to roll. Okay, so we have to roll once for the city and we have to roll once for the countryside, and um, they're gonna lose one safety in both, and we're also going to get minus one morale. 
Or we can put the top helper card of each deck on the bottom of their decks. Ooh. No, I don't want to do that. Don't want to do that at all. So we'll go ahead and do this one. Good night. That's minus one morale. And we're also going to roll for the city. So a three has to lose one. Well, that's kind of that's kind of uh, thematic, isn't it? And uh, down here on the countryside, a four. So the four, the hairdresser of all places, has to lose one safety as well. So we're done with that one. Um, okay, that's not bad. I need some coffee. I'm getting a little nervous here. Spurs fan Lewis is here. Hello, Lewis. Flash to Dust is here. Good to see you. I already said hi. Uh, Sam was volunteered while he was delivering the bag. Right? I mean, it's like voluntold, more like. I'm like, uh-uh. All right, so now I'm going to draw another occupier card. We're going to get these guys back into our hand. And we reset all of the morale actions over here. Bing, bing, bing. And now we're going to try to do some stuff. Um, wow, four money? Holy cow. Four money. Um, all right, we're going to do, we're going to do safety first again. We're going to get plus two. No, 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 no. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Not that. Not yet. We're going to first of all use one of our morale actions and move one to the black market. Then we're going to use this one, and we're going to do plus two here at the black market, so we'll just go up to one. Um, and then we'll be able to move two. Um, so we'll go one. We have to stop here and do a halt card. Drunk soldiers. Well, isn't that fun? You are carrying some things in your bag that might... Oh, wait. I didn't do the danger phase, did I? I didn't. I just started over. <laughs> derf. Derfy derf. So I'll leave these flipped up. Um, but we did that, but now we need to do the danger phase. I'm I'm stupid. Okay, and I have I've already drawn my occupier card, so let's wait for that. Danger phase, lower safety base on scenario and resources. So I don't have to lose any safety or alibi. Because I'm in a location that is uh I'm in a location that is a active location. So I don't have to worry about any of that, and I don't have to lose any because of uh, resources or anything like that, or alibi. So that's good. The danger phase is passed. The patrol phase, we gotta do this. Whoosh. All right, so we have to lose one morale, which stinks because that means this one won't be able to be active. And I have to roll for the countryside to lose another safety. So a five, the forger loses some safety. All occupiers in the purple region, which is over here, have to move one in the white direction. So... This is going to go up to A, which kind of stinks. And that's about it. Uh, no occupiers in the purple region. You have to intensify a road in this region chosen by the first player. But there was. All right. So that's that. That was the danger phase. That was the patrol phase. Now we can move on to uh, our movements. So I'm going to use this guy right here to move one. Then... I'm going to use this one to do the plus one here, and then I'm going to move one, and I'm going to two, but I have to do this first. 
Drunk soldiers, you are carrying some things in your bag that might seem suspicious. The bag could be visible from a distance and looks like it is too full. You see two soldiers drinking in a cafe that you are passing. You disturb them as something drops from the bag on the floor. You quickly pick it up, but have drawn the attention of the two soldiers. You have a feeling they had quite a few drinks already. Will you make a very short excuse and try to ignore them while walking away? Or will you explain what you are carrying and why? I'm going to make a very... Um, mm, it could go either way. They're drunk, so they're... Oh, geez, Louise. Will you make a very short excuse and try to ignore them while walking away? If you walk away, that's going to piss them off, isn't it? Or will you explain what you're carrying and why? I will explain what I'm carrying and why. You decide... Well, oh, man... <laughs> I'm going to stick with it, but I'm, just, I'm trying to explain something to drunk people. Why am I doing this? Explain. Explain. Okay. You decide that it's best to explain why you have these things in your bag. They are clearly not very focused. You hope that you can use that to your advantage with this explanation. They ask some questions about the things in your bag and ask where you're going, but they then let you go. If you have three or more resources, lose an additional alibi. So I have to lose one alibi. Um, so that was it. Okay. I think that was probably... Uh, goodness, that would have had an ongoing effect. So I think I made the right decision here. Good job. Yes, yes. Awesome. All right. So now I get to finish this safety first movement and I'm going to go there and I get plus two. So one, two back up there. I'm trying to keep that bank from folding under the pressure. Um, we will use preaching um, for another... Uh, point, and that means I need to get, um, I'm going to get four money. Do I have, how in the, one, I mean, I have to get two, four, and I already, my goodness gracious, I'm just not doing this in very, so I've already got one of those. Why did I go over to the, Man, I'm stupid. Why did I go all the way over there? Do I need some of that? No, I don't. I've already got that. I got that. Oh, I needed two documents. Where are the documents? They were there. Stupid. Mm. Okay. I still have to go way over there to get that. I'm going to backtrack and use two of my actions over here to get two documents. I'm dumb because I didn't think this through. But now I still have to go all the way back over there. Um, I'm going to get two more bucks. No. Monkey nuggets. I was going over there. To come down there anyway. Um, all right. Um, I'm going to use this. I'm on a talking terms with this police officer now. I'm going to move two down to here. Uh, another halt card. Tulips at a small shop. You're walking past a small flower shop. Although their stock of flowers is quite limited, you see some very beautiful tulips. You're carrying a bit of cash and could buy them now. This would surely have a positive effect on everybody in your resistance group. On the other hand, spending this money here means there is less money available for other things. That might be more important right now. Do you decide to buy the tulips or think it's better not to spend the money at this moment? Well, I'm going to do that. I only have one money, so no, I'm not going to spend it. 
Um, not going to spend the money. Better not to spend the money. You think it's better not to spend the money as it is else needed elsewhere, although it was not as easy a decision. You have to accept reality. Hopefully the money will now be used for something that the resistance can immediately use, but you are not sure. So I have to lose one morale every time I walk pie these guys. I would have had to lose two if I tried to uh, just walk away from the other dudes. So that was further a good choice. All right, so one, two, and then I'll use... Um, this one, and we're going to move one here. Since now I've played that, I have to play this. Fleeing from trouble. If you are in the city, oh, ow. If you're in the city, it is minus two at the location I'm at and minus two alibi. Ow. That sucked. Oh, my. I don't like that at all. All right. And now it's going to lose two more. <gasps> oh, no. We got to get that done. That's what we need to do. All right. Here we go. Danger phase. Lower safety. So I got to lose one. I got to lose two, one, two at the meeting place. We got to stop meeting there. We need to change our meeting place. Um, and I'm not at a non-active location, so that doesn't take effect. So now we go to the patrol phase and green. We have to lose one morale and we have to roll for a city. Goodness, this could be bad four. So the church, we have to lose one. Okay. And all occupiers in the green region move one towards the black. So this guy is going to go here. And this guy is going to go down here here. <clears throat> and I think that's all in the green. Yep. All right. Well, that's not bad. Kind of. All righty. This goes on here. Uh, we are not going to finish this game. <laughs> Just letting you know that. Uh, let's see here, because I'm going to have to be done here pretty quick. But it, it is at least teaching me the game, and it's letting you guys see how it works as well. So that's good. All right. So now we're done. We activate all of these things, but we only have four morale actions this turn because our, our morale dipped below 17. So these guys come and this guy comes in here. And now we are red eye. All right. Um, wow. Really need to do this. Okay. If he's at the church, I could do this, but it costs some contacts so we need to go get some contacts which is really bad so all right so we're going to do this one and this allows me to take an action i get plus one where i'm at and adjacent locations so one here at the church so church and the hairdresser and the black market doesn't need it. And the forger. So that's not bad. And then we're going to take a movement. And we're just going to go one, two. And then uh, we'll use, let's see, how many do I need? I need one. But I could also use 
that to give us this. Okay, so we're going to use two. One, two, to take two of these guys. And I think that gives me everything I need. Yeah, one, oops, two. It gives me everything I need, but now I'm going to... Stop there. It's one, two, one, two. No, one. And one of those can be this. Hmm. Yeah, I think that works. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this and use it for that ability down there. So I'm going to do plus two down here, which is only a one. But that's good. And then we'll go one, two, and we get plus two here, which is good. Then we'll use this one to move one, two, up to the station. And then I'm going to use that to do um, our scenario action, gain trust. And so we're going to spend a money, a contact, and two documents to get rid of that <clears throat> and flip this over to its active side. <clears throat> then that goes over there. And I can immediately do one of these things. So I think... Plus three and plus two. Ooh. Ooh. We're going to do um, contact the police and can send police officer in the wrong direction, making it a bit safer for us in this region. Ooh. And I get plus two somewhere. Okay, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use Jan, Jan, or Jan Duma. And Jan Duma can send a police officer in the wrong direction, so I can, spend, I can send this guy... Um, to T, and then I can get plus two somewhere else. So I'm going to get plus two over here in the hospital, which gives me six instead of four. So that's cool. Then this goes to the bottom of that, and I can flip over a cost token somewhere else. Um, we're going to do black market. So the black market needs um, rations, documents, and two of my choice. Well, that's kind of stinky. Hmm. All right. Now we're going to... We are in a good location. We need, we need some... Oh, man... Hmm. Need a couple documents over there. So I'm just going to use this to go one, two over here to our meeting place once again. And now we have a suspicious meeting. So I have to take a hit to Alibi and a hit to where I am, but I'll get one information and I'll be able to. Uh, I don't know what that symbol means. Uh, I mean, I know what it has to do with, but I don't know if it's which way it is. I have to intensify an occupier 
token with the policeman side face up or uh, flip an occupier token already on the board from the policeman to the soldier side for an adjacent road of your current location. Current location. So I can't do that. So you add occupier token to the uh, an adjacent space. Well, oh, that sucks. Snap dragon. Okay, I think I'm just gonna add a police officer down here on L. All right, so that gives me a hit with alibi and then my location gets negative two. But I do get some information out of it. So yay, Bob. All right, that goes away. Um, hmm. Did the Spurs make the playoffs? Nobody cares, Matthew. Nobody cares. I actually, I don't know. You probably care. That's why you asked. Lewis probably cares because he's a Spurs fan. All right. Um, so now we have to go to danger phase. So I have to lose one where I'm at. Goodness gracious. Um, resolve the top patrol card. Oh, man. This could be bad. Patrol key. All right. I have to lose one morale. And I have to roll one for a countryside location. Four, which is this one. So it comes down one. All right, all occupiers in the region, which is gray, um, move the one. So this will go to J, this will go to K, and this will also go to K. All right. And that's it for there. And this goes underneath. Hmm. Okay. I got to get my alibi back up. I got to go to the hospital to do that. Hmm. All right. Another occupier card. I'm going to do one more round, folks. And then we'll have to take off, but you'll see what's happening at least by then. Um, all right, what have I got? I've got this and this. What do I need? Oh, what do I need? What do I need? A lot more than what I have. Good night. All right, so all of these flip back over. And I've got these, so... Okay, we're going to go one, two, to get two documents where I'm at. And then I'm going to go one here. to go one up there. And then while I'm at the church, I can do this or this. So when you use this church this card at the church farm or meeting or meeting place, then I don't need to do this. Boom. Or the meeting place or the meeting place. I'm dumb. So I can do one contact and I get plus 6. So that puts me all the way up at 20. That's awesome. 20 morale, and I get plus two and plus two. So I'm going to do one, two here, and then I'll do one, two here at the distribution office as well. Um, so that's cool. That's a good card. I like that card. Um, Okay, so I've got those two, and now I need to get down there and get that. Ooh, 
Sweet. I'm going to go with... I'm going to go with this, and I'm going to use it for that. I'm going to get plus two here, one, two. Then I'm going to go one, two, and I get plus two here, but I don't get that because it doesn't need it. Next action is going to be to use this. And that gets me two rations. Bing, bing. And now I'm going to use <coughs> this to go one, two. And then I will use this for my final action. But I also get plus one where I am, which I don't get it. But I also get plus one at adjacent locations. So I'll get plus one at the hospital. Um, I would get plus one here, but I don't need it. And plus one there, I don't need it. And that's it. So my last action, however, is going to be another. Uh, I get rid of one ration, two documents, and two of my choice, which will be just bits of information. And that gets rid of this. And that allows me to flip the black market over. And um, I'm going to go with Jacobus as my helper and he can get plus two and plus three. So at the police station, we'll go plus three, one, two, three. And then at the, uh, at the uh, informant, we'll go plus two over here. So that was that. And now I have to do this card, assisted, hel uh, arrested help. So resolve a helper card reversing its effects. <gasps> Oh my. Safety, alibi, or morale. If the card would raise safety, alibi, or morale, lower it by that amount instead. Nope. If it would give a resource, a ticket, or Auschwitz, instead spend it. Reduce becomes intensify. Resolve policeman movement on a card as normal. <whistles> nope. We're just going to do this. <laughs> um... We will flip this guy over. That's the intensify. All right, so that is that. Um, then we have to do, we have to lower our safety by two. We're at the black market, so we have to go one, two, like that. Um, and I'm not at an non-active location, so I don't have to wor worry about that. And we have to resolve a patrol card. So patrol blue, that's up here. Oh, no. Oh, there's one here. Good. Whew. All right, so we lose one morale. It takes us back down to 19. And we have to roll for a city building to lose a safety. Ooh, six. That's the meeting place. So it goes down to six. All soldiers in the region move one. There are no soldiers in the blue region, so all policemen move one to the... So this guy comes over here. No occupiers. That doesn't worry. We don't worry about that. Okay. So that is that. And that's the end of the one, two, three, four... One, two, three, four, five... Fifth round. So we're... Just one short of halfway through the game, so that's where we'll have to... Uh, uh, just pulling up to Commas Meadows, see you soon. Yep, we'll be up there in a little bit. We're going to go to church first, Doug. Um, and uh, we'll be coming up after church. Oh, wow, we're playing shoots and ladders? Cool! <laughs> no, Eric is not shoots and ladders. Um, so, I really like this game so far. 
I, I like the theme. I like how you're sneaking around. Um, I like the helpers. Haven't used the uh, tickets or the Auschweiz yet, but that's just because, you know, you have, we have to work on getting all these locations unlocked and then we can, you know, try to use some of them. But um, nothing, we didn't use any raid cards because I was very specific and very intentional about getting, uh, making sure that our, our safety stays pretty high. And I think that's one of uh, Fritz's um, uh, special abilities is that he keeps the safety of the different places pretty high. So that was a, a good character, I guess, to use uh, for the solo mode. So I don't have to really necessarily worry about raids so much. Um, oh, wow, I forgot to be doing these. Oh, nuts. Because I could have been putting these out at different locations, and then I could... Oh, I forgot to use the request tokens. Oh, doo-doo. That's my fault. Um, so basically, request tokens, you can choose three locations, uh, non-active locations, to put these out at. And as long as you don't use them, um, then uh, you... As long as you don't use them, they stay out there, and for all of the unused request tokens, you get to use an extra helper, and you get to um, um, looks like minus one um, safety at that location too. So, eh. but if you use the resolve locate use, if you use one of these things, resolve the location action without spending the action point cost. All other costs still apply. Um, so that's pretty, I don't know. I just forgot to use them. I forgot they were there. Anyway, that was a small thing, small mistake. All right, I'm going to get out of here because I got to pack up. Uh, and then I got to go pick up kids. And then we got to go to church. And then we got to go to Comic Con. So <laughs> hopefully this has been fun. Uh, if it has not been fun, I apologize. But I think it has because this is actually a pretty fun experience. I like this theme. I like this game. I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to getting this played this weekend, actually. So thank you for joining me. I'm going to get on out of here. We hope that you have a great time this weekend. Remember, uh, tomorrow and Saturday, we won't have any streams coming up. I will be putting up some... Um, we, I will be trying to put up some different uh, short videos over the weekend of things that we're doing up there at Comic Con. Uh, so you can be on the lookout for those, but they'll be shorts. So I'll probably put up a, a couple of them each day if I have the ability to. Uh, the um, phone uh, carryability up there is not uh, very high. So um, I'll do what I can. I'll see what I can do and then go from there. But anyway, thank you for joining me here today. If you came in late, I apologize that I'm going to get out of here early. You can go back and watch and kind of get a gist for how the game works. Uh, but this has been Dutch Resistance Orange Shall Overcome from the Liberation Game Design Group and designer Marcel Kohler. Thank you for joining me. We'll see you guys and gals on the flip side. Take care.